That's the Chaco rattlesnake. Crudulus terrestris terrificus. Does not want to go in the tube. We use these tubes because these snakes have a heavy body that you can see there and a relatively small head and neck. As you can see, it's just turning around. And the tube basically keeps the snake from being able to thrash and twist. And that makes it safer for the snake, less likely to injure itself, and also safer for Jim. This one here, I tend to call light. It may be actually a xanthic, which means it doesn't have yellow pigment. That has not been tested. I'm just going by what it looks like. We have, I think, three right now that look like this. Kind of neat looking. I also don't know if this is something that you can breed for because we haven't tried to do that since we're breeding for venom and not color. Yeah, I'll try to show the eye. Of course, it's putting its skin over its eye. Maybe now that you're done, I can get it. Yeah, they have these really dark eyes. There is a pupil in there. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's just that there's a lot of dark pigment in the eye. She's watching me because she knows I'm the lady who gives her food. Totally teasing. I doubt the snake knows that. Looking at me because you pointed her at me when you set her down. <laughs> yep. I feel like I should mention something about this turning behavior. Basically, the snake feels that Jim is trying to entice them to crawl down the tube and so feels the need to turn around and check out what is happening but their body is big enough that they really can't turn all the way around in the tube. They just kind of get stuck for a second and then they decide that they need to go forward after all. And this one just said a thing. There it is. of you who are critically watching this video, this tube is too large. However, well, there's some of the stuff we're trying to prevent with the tube. There isn't a tube that is in the middle. This is the smallest tube of the large set, and we have the largest tube of the small set, and there is not one in between. We wish there were. hitting the side of the plastic a little bit there too. The venom of these things is quite neurotoxic. And it also, they have a very small yield, partially just because their head is small. The venom glands are not as big. But you'll notice if you watch some of our other videos with other types of rattlesnakes, like Eastern or Western Diamondback, for example, their venom yield is going to be much more for essentially the same size snake. So that failed to shut because the snake drug a little bedding into the track. So Jim's using the hook to clean that out. And then it will close. Hooray! The snakes that are in this video that are about this size are, I believe, around four years old now. 
three to four years old. And so they are smaller because they're younger. We have to be really careful with these not to let them grow too quickly or to overfeed them because they are very prone to being obese. And that can cause health problems for them just like it can for humans. So they can get fatty liver disease and other problems associated with being overweight. And so we don't really want that to happen, but we do want them to grow. So it's a little bit of a balancing act to make sure that we're not overfeeding them. And some snakes will grow really, really quickly, like cobras, for example, but mambas. mambas, things like that, that have a higher metabolism. But these guys have a little bit slower metabolism, so they're not, they're just going to get overweight if you feed them too much. They're not going to really grow faster. Sometimes when these are at the correct height, it's easier to just get them in the tube directly. As you can see here, the snake really doesn't get upset. It's fairly easy. They don't always cooperate like that, but oh, this is it's kind of nice. Oh, we'll look at this one's tail. She, looks she does look gravid. And by that, I mean she's going to have babies. Or at least we hope she's going to have babies. There's definitely something down there. You can see how all the scales are kind of stretched apart by her tail. And that's where the babies are. She also throws warm, so she's been eating. Yeah. They do tend to sit on the warm spot a lot more when they're gestating, which is logical. Okay. I didn't really stop videoing, so. I can, yeah. So comparing the last snake to this one, you may notice that this one has kind of a lighter shade of brown. And that is the male coloration. The females tend to be a little bit darker than the males. And the males will actually get lighter during breeding season and then get somewhat darker during the off season when they're not breeding. in the cheek a little bit there. And Jim was saying it's either shedding or getting ready to shed a fang, which sometimes means that the fang is no longer connected to the duct and the venom comes out inside the cheek also. So using our newly minted way to tell, we can see this one is a female because she has the darker brown coloration. She also may be gravid. She looks pretty round from my vantage point. She's pretty heavy on that. Oh, she's pretty heavy on that. Ah, yeah. Especially when you can see the rounded underside. Normally, their vent or their the bottom of the snake is relatively flat. And when it's rounded out, like this one is, then that's an indication that there's something in there.
Yeah, so the snake was using the edge of the tub there to be able to kind of slide its back tube out. So it started going into the tube, but then it decided that, well, he decided really would rather not, which is understandable. You know, we can't explain to them that we would just like them to bite this thing. And so they're giving some venom just because they're they're scared. And that's why we try to do this as efficiently as we can and spend as little amount of time with each snake as possible. If we were taking extra time either to, I don't know, shake them around, something, then that's just increasing the stress to the snake. And so when we try to do things as quickly as we can, we don't want to be unsafe because we're going too fast, but we want the snake to have as little stress as we can. This is going to be stressful, but we're going to try to limit it. And one way to think about this encounter is almost like, I don't know, super enrichment. So these snakes, I can't see it. Yeah, look. Oh. Yeah, I did. I can I see that. I don't know if it shows on the video or not. Well, yeah, I bet she see what has that. So these snakes go through this stressful experience, and it is similar to what they would encounter in the wild in terms of they would be scared if a predator got a hold of them and they felt like they had to fight to defend themselves. And so the rest of their life, we try to make that as stress-free and easy for them as possible so that they can tolerate this few minutes of higher stress. And that's about once a month for these guys. So here's an example of one that's being a little bit more difficult to do. A little strike for you. And you happen to be the person trying to get the snake in the tube, it's really important to stay patient and not get upset. The snake is upset, but it's not the snake's fault. It doesn't understand what's going on. It doesn't understand what we want it to do, or she, I think it's the female. And so you just have to be patient and calm and keep trying. And eventually they will on up there. But if you let yourself get flustered in a situation like that, then that just makes the situation more dangerous to everybody. And it doesn't really help anything. Because again, the snake has no concept of what we want or why we want it to do a certain thing. So this snake is keeping her head kind of in the tube until just now. And the reason for that is she is trying to protect her head in there. But if Jim tries to put his hand down on her neck and it's right by the tube, then she can really pinch his fingers in between her jaw and the tube, which doesn't feel good. is a kind of interestingly colored Chaco rattlesnake. This is Protolus terrestris terrificus. And this snake, I don't know the specifics of what genetic variant it is to have this slightly different color, but this one seems to lack yellow, so it may be azanthic. I don't know that for sure. They're kind of pretty like this, though, and they have these very dark eyes. Let me try to get a close-up of it here, if possible. 
camera will focus. There we go. Let's see. And that is just the normal coloration of their eyes. It's not an infection or anything weird going on in there. It's just what they look. And this one showed a tang. That's normal. And it's already got a new one. So this one is somewhat older. And this one has a really long rattle. <laughs> No, the length of the rattle doesn't have anything to do with how old the rattlesnake is. It's just it's how many times it shed its skin. And I don't think this one has ever broken its rattle, so it's got a long rattle. The snake itself is, I believe, around 10 years old, something like that. I can double check here in a sec. <laughs> It's the rattle of this big guy. I held it so I stopped it from rattling. <laughs> I was trying to have it be in focus. Alright. Alright, so we're filming this in 2025 and 10 years ago in 2015, Jim sustained a very serious bite from one of these guys. And essentially what happened was he had the snake in the tube. He didn't realize that the tube had become brittle over time. And so the snake kind of did a strong flex and was able to get its head and neck out and bite Jim uh, in the wrist basically right here. It was a significant enough bite or at least enough venom injected that he was already having some neurotoxic symptoms before like anyone was on their way to the hospital. So he had ptosis, the inability to open your eyes uh, in the parking lot here. And then I actually wasn't here, but our lead keeper, Kat, who some of you may know, she actually was in charge of getting him to the hospital. And it was a fairly harrowing experience for her because he was starting to lose consciousness in the car and she was having to kind of punch him to, to keep him awake. And once they met up with an ambulance, then she rode with him the rest of the way to the hospital. And according to her, Jim woke up in the ambulance and was like, hey, I'm gonna need 15 vials or something. And he doesn't remember any of that happening. So uh, <laughs> he did, but uh, he doesn't remember it. He actually was put on a ventilator for six to eight hours. I don't remember exactly. I came back from where I was traveling to, of course. And at that point, Jim was starting to overbreathe the ventilator. So he was ready to be extubated at that point. And then he actually was fairly stable. However, he started to have some uh, lab values that showed he had a lot of muscle degradation. They do have a strong myotoxin in, in addition to the neurotoxin. And so he stayed overnight because they needed to give him a lot of fluids to try to make sure his kidneys didn't sustain any damage. So that's basically the, the course of that treatment. It healed up without any localized tissue damage, uh, but it was a fairly uh, rapid onset bite. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more KRZ videos and don't forget to hit the bell so you know when it's happening. Follow us on social media at KY Reptile Zoo for more scaly content. Lastly, come visit us in Slade, Kentucky and check out our website at kyreptilesu.com for merch and booking programs. See ya!